In Britain today, we consume more fast food than ever before. It's cheap, not only that, it keeps me going every day. But how much do we really know about the lives of the people who make our food? I never really think about where my food comes from. If I see something, I like the look of the picture on the front. I just grab it and shove it in the shopping trolley. From top-class restaurants to low-cost supermarkets, we're demanding and consuming more and more food from all over the world. I go and get a takeaway two times a week. Chinese, Indian, Italian, never give it a second thought. But would we feel the same if we knew the human price of producing our food? We need food that's cheap, we want food that's cheap and we expect it. But obviously it's going to come at some cost. Over the next three weeks, six young and hungry British consumers will travel to Asia to live and work alongside the millions of people who grow, catch and process the food that we eat. They are fast food junkie Manos. It's that import and exporter is exploiting another person so that my price is cheap, then so be it. Fussy eater Jess. I'd eat meat if it was in the form of a burger or a sausage. Just makes me feel a little bit more, oh, OK, that's all right to eat, that's fine, that's not an animal, just shove it in your mouth. Luxury food lover Lauren. I think food is definitely glamorous. I'd go as far as say it's erotic. Concerned consumer Stacey. You see all the price wars going on between the big supermarkets. It does make you think, where, where are they cutting the corners? And keen amateur chef Josh. Wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about what I'm having for breakfast, what I'm having for lunch, tea time. These young Brits will discover how workers in Asia get tuna, prawns, rice and chicken to our dinner tables from thousands of miles away. I'm starting to really appreciate how hard it is to support your family. No one gives a shit about these people. Last week, they discovered how tuna, one of Britain's most popular foods, gets from Indonesia to our dinner tables. <laughs> You smell that. They lived with the tuna workers. But it isn't very nice. It stinks. It's grotty. Oh, my God! Struggle to cope with the 90-degree heat of the tuna canneries. Whoa! Oh, keep your head up, keep your head up. People are just working like machines. I can't act like a machine. I'm just a human being. And were shocked by the reality of life at sea. I've been told the average wage for a two-day fishing trip is about three pounds. That You wouldn't get out of bed for it back home. The pressure of living as tuna workers proved too much for one of the group. I'm scared. I think he should go. I think he must go. And Ollie Johnson was sent back home. But tonight, things get even tougher. The group are heading deep into the jungle to tackle Indonesia's tiger prawn industry. What I'm seeing here is nothing but filth, Mark. I'm really gobsmacked. In the UK, we now eat more prawns than ever before. Last year alone, sales increased by 14%. In total, we buy £170 million worth a year, four times more than we spend on frozen burgers. Hello, the Brits will live with prawn farmers in remote jungle huts. This is just horrendous. You just feel dirty all the time. Yeah. I feel filthy. Struggle in the thick mud and stifling heat of the ponds. I've done my goddamn hardest. There's nothing else I can do. It's so hard out here. I'm just amazed to see how hard he work. And find out firsthand about life in the prawn factories. I can't see anything other than their eyes. They're just like robots. The port town of Angana on the island of Kalimantan, Indonesia. Oh, God, that oh, is bad. Oh, this is horrible. The group are about to start work processing the prawns sold in Britain's restaurants, shops and cafes. But first, they must travel to the farm where the prawns are reared. Do you know what? I'm quite happy that we're getting off this place, to be honest. So... It's a two-hour journey to the farm, and the only way to get there is by boat on the Mahakam River. Associate this kind of background with like Steve Irwin and crocodiles, not prawn picking. I'm absolutely bricking it. That's a house. 
The very sight of this place gives me the creeps. Oh my god. Waiting for them is Tagu Adiprasatia. Thank you. Tagu is one of the bosses of the region's largest prawn company, PT Siam Surya. Uh, come on. Like this. Uh, afternoon. In the afternoon. Yeah, oh. usually at midday very hot, uh, but afternoon going to be rain. The Brits will live with prawn farmer Mamak, his wife Sumani, and their son Anka in this basic wooden hut. The farmers have no beds to sleep in, no TV, and no running water. The nearest town is two hours away by boat. Mr. Mama. Hello, Mr. Mama. My name is Josh. Hello. His wife, his boy. Mamak is one of literally thousands of prawn farmers who tend vast ponds dug out of the mangrove swamps. Okay, guys, here we are. Uh, we are in the prawn farms. Our processing is starting from here. It's the first step of prawns processing. If you bought some prawn sandwiches, yeah, probably come from here. Really? <laughs> These ponds hold thousands of prawns. The majority of them end up on British supermarket shelves. In the package uh -huh. of the prawn, they show nice river, nice uh, emerald sea, uh -huh. and that's where they said, you know, that's where the prawn is catching. They got the seal and this stuff. But I wasn't expecting uh -huh. the prawns to come from yes, there. No. Yes. So yeah, I'm yeah. just amazed. How did the prawns get in there in the first place? We, we got mean? baby larvae and put inside. Uh, oh right. Mm. So this prawn is. Man made, yeah. So it's like a massive prawn incubator then? Yeah. Yes. What about crocodiles? Crocodile, not inside, but maybe probably outside the river. Mm. But we could get in. Uh, if the flood maybe can come in. So, <clears throat> you said if there's a flood, yes. crocodiles can come over the bank and they'll be in there. Yeah. So they could bite us and eat us. Uh, it might happen. Oh, I never thought in my wildest dreams that prawns came from muddy swamp yards in the middle of the forest. I'm just about to go to the toilet for the first time. Um, I'm a little on the anxious side, but it's got to be done. It's just a, it's just a wooden floor with a bit of slat removed. You're fucking joking. Oh, great. Bye-bye, Lauren. 22-year-old North London girl Lauren Kay loves the finer things in life. I think food is definitely glamorous. I'd go as far as say it's erotic. Lauren left university last year, but is still searching for her ideal job. Most recently, she worked at Harrods um, as an elf at the Grotto. Manual labour is... She will give it a go. She's not sort of a weak person, mentally or, or physically, but I, I think that will be a bit of a culture shock. Lauren, like most youngsters, have been to a number of pop and rock festivals where you come back caked in mud. It's not the same as out in the Far East, but she has sort of survived under conditions that were not exactly ideal. I think I miss home comforts. Clean bed sheets, showers, nice quilted toilet paper I think I miss. That was probably one of the worst toilet experiences of my life. It was, it was really hard to <sighs> to aim it in the hole, and also I fell backwards and thought I was going to fall into the bloody river. Oh my god! What happens if I need the toilet in the middle of the night? Before the Brits settle down for their first night in the jungle, the farmer's wife Sumani has prepared supper. With no shops for miles, the farmers rely on whatever they can catch from the ponds to feed themselves. Tonight, it's boiled crab. This is just horrendous. It's been it's, it's been sat out for three hours. It tastes yeah. rank. So do you eat like crab and fish a lot? Is that like your main diet? Yeah. Yes, honey. 
I just feel really, really bad for them because they kind of look at you like there's something wrong with their food, like why are you not eating it? It's just like something I've never eaten at home. I think it's going to be another week of rice and noodles, guys. After dinner, there's nothing to do but to get their heads down and prepare for a physical day's work tomorrow. Maybe put some Coco Chanel on and let us go then. Look at them all! Oh, that's really bad. The prospect of living on a prawn farm is already proving too much for Manos. I've never lived in such squalor in my life. I've never, and I've got flicking mosquitoes biting everywhere. It's totally, get, it's totally got to me, I'm telling you, all these, look at it, it's just shit after shit. Just shit everywhere. I'm back, I... At 6 a.m., Mamak wakes the Brits up and takes them out to work as labourers in the prawn pond. I am so terrified of going in this water. Are you, morning. Josh? All right, thank you. Aaron? Good morning. Good size of wow. This is our product. You want to see? Yeah. Got a size of that? Wow, it's spiky. The farmers harvest the prawns every two weeks. The rest of the time, they work to prevent the prawns from being washed away by the tides. I don't know if I like the idea. Yeah, yeah. So, stay away with what we're going to do today is building the wall, yeah? Because if you don't build the wall constantly, when the water rises, the prawns will come out. This is a serious thing, yeah? Last couple months, we lost 25 to 30% of our stock. Each pond is nearly 1,000 metres of mud wall, which must be constantly rebuilt. Tagu wants the Brits to repair a damaged 40 metre section using mud bricks cut from the pond. Whoa! Oh, man. <laughs> a good sized brick weighs four stone. So I'm going to leave you for a couple hours and we'll be back and see the progress. See you Bye. Bye. Is it water cold? I don't want to fall in a hole. <laughs> what we'll do is, if we cut, pass it to Lauren and then use two pap jets. We can't move because we're sinking. As, you, as you're digging, you're sinking. This is hard. The harder you move, the harder it is to get out, and you start sinking. And plus the fact that we stink a turd, it's horrible. Mortgage advisor Josh Hill is definitely not used to hard labour. Oh, at home, I'm a pencil pusher, sat behind a desk. The most physical thing I do at work is getting up and putting paper in the printer. I think the main worry about the trip is been out of my comfort zone. At just 20, Josh already owns his own home in Warrington, where he lives with his girlfriend Jade and baby Finley. After school, Josh started training as a chef, but the long hours and low pay made him choose a very different career with a job at the local bank. Josh isn't very practical. He's absolutely useless when it comes to DIY. He can get put off <laughs> if something involves a lot of hard work. I've always got family around me who were always there to help. I'm going to have to do a lot of things on my own and, and rely on myself to get me through the tough times. Five Indonesian workers can complete 40 metres of mud wall in a day if they all work as a team. Manos, stop being a baby and get on with it. Manos is moaning, he's fed up and he's not even done much yet. As I seem to be lifting all the big stuff. They call me half a job, Josh, at home, but I reckon I'm working the hardest at the minute. Go for it, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. After a couple of hours, the group have managed just a few metres. The girls have resorted to offering advice. Manos, get stuck in! And Manos has had enough. This job is not, you know, it's not cut out for me. 
the amount of effort, you know, and the amount, the amount of strain that's needed in order to do this job. I'm not saying that I've finished. It's just that I felt really dizzy and I was about to fall down. Guys, he's coming back. What are you doing here? Huh? No I, I thought you're five meters in two hours. You don't even get that. It must be some problem with you, yeah? I had a few complications. But that's not my problem, right? We are behind the schedule at this moment, yeah? Now let's start work again and organize well. Very disappointing because they're working very slowly. I've been working my arse off out there and he comes and just says it's not good enough. My opinion is, and I don't want to offend anyone, that people aren't pulling the weight. I've been shoulder deep in water, picking up huge lumps, and I don't, I'm not being big headed, but if I wasn't here, then there'd probably be even less done so far. But we tried our best, eh? I don't think we did that bad. Look at that, I think we've done okay. We've got a bit on. Yeah, I suppose we are beginners, aren't we? Yeah. I don't it's give a crap to tell you, the truth. I'm so not, I'm not fainting. I'm not going to argue it out with bitch, with bitch, but... I'll get out with him rather than with each other. By mid afternoon, the temperature has risen to over 100 degrees. Even Josh is starting to lose his enthusiasm for the job. I feel like we're baking out here. But the quicker we do it, the quicker we can go home. Yeah. Oh. It's just so physical. It really is so hard. This 40 meters wall, and you've done five meters. So still 35 meters to go. If you do it five meters a day, so you will stay here eight days to finish. There'll be nothing okay. left of us. We did terribly. Can't be doing this for seven days. Don't like that thought. But help is on its way. A new Brit is coming to join the group. All I can say is I'm, I'm really excited and very nervous. Last week, when the Brits were working in Indonesia's tuna industry, the pressure became too much for one of them. Manos, are you scared? Yeah. Coming in to replace Olu is 22-year-old Essex farmer James Ray. Outdoor guy James comes from a long line of farming stock. Great granddad was a farmer, granddad was a farmer, uncle became a farmer, and I'm next in line. I go out shopping, buying local is the most important thing for me. I want people to buy British. It's more important to look after your own than it is to send money a million miles across the world. Oh. I'd like to learn a bit more about myself, more about farming in other areas. Hopefully make me stand up and appreciate my life a lot more. James isn't short of confidence. I have been told that I could charm the birds from the trees. He's very much the ladies' man. I would say that he can charm anyone. Doesn't matter how old or how young. And he's not shy of getting his hands dirty either. I definitely get stuck into any manual work that, that's put in front of me. I'm, I, I love manual work. He might be a confident young farmer, but Indonesia's jungle prawn ponds are just as foreign to him as they are to the rest of the group. Who's this? Who's that? We've got a new person. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Your name is? Stacey. What's your Stacey, name? Stacey James. James. Nice Hello, James. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jess. Jess, nice to meet you. You couldn't have met Welcome us at a better time. <laughs> you look like you've been enjoying yourselves. <laughs> oh, if only you knew. If only you knew. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no one is more delighted to see a new boy than Josh. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Josh. Josh, nice to meet you, Josh James. <laughs> you turned up a bit late, haven't you? How are you doing? You alright? Yeah, good. James? Uh, I'm a farmer. You're a farmer? Oh, yeah. oh that's all right. Prawn farmer? No, not a prawn farmer, no. Mm. Uh, so, we are behind the schedule, so tomorrow I need you to work more harder. No six people, right? See you again tomorrow at 8 a.m. No, shit. Because the new guy kind of comes from a farm. I'm hoping he won't, you know, kind of be someone who just leaves everyone and gets on with it and thinks, oh, yeah, I'm good at doing this. 
I think it's going to be really good for us to have somebody sort of fresh coming in. Yeah, definitely. It can totally motivate us. I can't wait to take these boots off. After a day caked in mud, the Brits wash down as best they can. Just want to check it over our feet first. I'm going to just try and wash the bits that are dirty. Oh. This thing here is the hygiene. Yeah, yeah I used to feel like dirty me. all the time. Yeah. I feel filthy. I felt really lonely over the last couple of days, mainly because I'm missing home so much, but also because, you know, there's the three girls and then there's Manos. And I just feel like maybe I was do more than everyone else today. So seeing James come and get on board was dead uplifting. Having James here will help. I think he feels like he was going to want to prove himself a bit because he's the new guy. It's their third day on the farm. I'm freezing cold. The thought of having to get back in there is just hideous. We've had a day on it, that's enough, don't you think? With James, they've got an extra pair of hands, but there's still 35 metres of wall to complete. Maybe you can afford to finish this wall in one week, one week but I cannot afford because, as you see, the weather, every day rainy, of course the water level will rise, and also the high tide, yeah. Do as quick as possible. If there's a high tide, the prawns could be swept away, so the Brits must finish the wall as quickly as possible. New boy James throws himself into the job. I'm a little size of that monster. I've got a gold mine. <laughs> it does seem like a really lovely bloke, and maybe he will help the group to kind of get up and get motivated, but I don't know, he just seems like he'll be good at everything, and when someone's so good at something and you're so rubbish, it kind of makes you feel down, but also at the same time makes you want to work harder. It's like the hardest physical thing I've ever done. Every step you take in the water, every piece of mud you pick up, you've got to dig so deep. I just find the energy from somewhere. I can't even feel my legs. It's so hard. I've got so much respect for these guys. And but I knew this is where our prawns come from. Every prawn I ate, oh, my treasure so much. Tegu returns after three hours. Guys, comes around. The group have managed another go, go, go. seven metres, more than they did the whole of yesterday. Do you think this is your best you can do? I can see your progress. It's around 12 metres long, but still not enough to finish this job, right? Everybody's Are you happy with now. what you've done, I'm Jess? Happy. Yeah. I've worked, like, I'm happy because I've never hard, like, worked, worked this hard really in my hard. whole life. I've never been this dirty in my whole life. I've never stood in the rain this long in my whole life. Yeah, the, I've never worked in these conditions before in my whole life, and I've done my goddamn hardest. 19-year-old dance teacher Jess Cooper lives at home with her family in Barnet. All my family describes me as Paris Hilton. Especially my mum. She's little Miss Perfect, wants everything to go her way, and she spends hours in her room grooming herself. And it's kind of the daily joke in the house, oh, Paris is coming home, oh, move out the way, Paris is coming through the room, and Paris wants this, and, Paris... and I think it's just because people think I'm so high maintenance. Jess has never actually travelled beyond Europe before. I think Jess will find it very hard roughing it because she's just so used to home comforts, obviously still living at home with her mum and dad and everything, that she just gets whatever she wants. But despite her pampered ways, Jess is determined to show people a different side to her. I am a very girly girl, but I'm also very... If there's a challenge in front of me, you know, I'll do it, and I'll do it with 100% effort. There's nothing else I can do, you know? I just feel like saying, what, what more do you want from me? Do you want me to draw blood? I've already do, do blood. Like, I just... Is, what, what else can I do? If it's not good enough, I'm sorry, but we're not Indonesian workers, blah, blah, blah. We can't get this done that far and this, that, and that. There's only so much we can do. Quite a lot of us have office jobs. We've never done anything like this in our life. Don't get me wrong, this is a million miles away from what we do at home, but at the end of the day, yeah. in my job, if I didn't hit targets and my boss shouted yeah. at me, 
You can't shout back. You, you'd be out of a job. We need to earn money to eat. You've just got to take it on the chin, haven't you? I just can't wait for this week to be over, to tell you the truth, because it's like my worst nightmare. I and mean, I suppose back home, I just rely on other people a lot, really, to kind of get me through the days. So I think out here, I just felt more on my own than I've ever felt in my life. Jess isn't the only one struggling. At the minute, I'm just missing home so much. I, I think I'd give my right arm right now just to be back home in my warm bed with Jade and the baby. I just miss their company. I miss friendly faces. All these things that I thought I'd be able to live without, I just, I just can't. But the one thing I have learned is that my, my family are the most special thing in the world and you need them by you when it gets tough. It's so hard out here. It's just, I'm just amazed to see how hard he worked. And it's really made me think that, no, I've got a, a bit of changing to do back home. I came here to, to learn about food and where food comes from. And as well as that, I seem to be learning so much about myself. Just thinking about how hard it is to work, how difficult it is, how, how tough it is. The last few months, from December to February, we lost our about 25 to 30 percent from our quantity. And so it's a massive difference if we keep the wall as high as possible. Tegu decides to take drastic action. I will call some Indonesian people to help us to finish this wall, yeah? Pak? Semua, Pak? They will be stuck from there, and then we will meet in the middle point, yeah? Mm -hmm. Can we start now? Yeah. Okay? To get the job done properly, Tegu orders Mamak and his team of labourers to work alongside the Brits. Right, let's get going on the wall. Ayo Pak, kalau bisa hari ini kita selesaikan. Oke? And pretty soon the wall is taking shape. They're rocking out really. They're they're completely tearing the place apart. Um, they've done as much in one hour that. But we, we did yesterday, pretty much. Many of the farm workers are migrants from the very poor regions of Indonesia. 25-year-old Duma has recently arrived from the island of Sulawesi to find work. How, how much do you earn? Duma earns 50 pounds a month. Um, just, just, and he spends all, the, all that money on surviving. Yeah. If you could have anything in your life, what would you have? He'd like to head back to Sulawesi because that's where his family live. How much would it cost to get back to Sulawesi? His big dream is to go back to Sulawesi to live with his family. Um, and he can't even afford to save for £20, which would get him there. For his £20 to get home, I'd work four hours, less than four hours. Three hours of my work is, is a lifetime dream for him. When, when we're eating prawns that probably cost five, six pounds for a bag, um, you think, you think where, where does that money go? Like what, what happens to it between coming from here to going all the way to the UK? I mean, obviously everyone takes a bit of a cut on the way, but that's a hell of a difference. I don't quite have the words for it, really because it, it, it puts everything quite in, into perspective about just how hard these guys work for nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing.
With everyone working together, the wall is completed on time. Yeah. Right. Okay, guys, well done. Concrete, concrete. Oh, 40 meters done. Time to wash. It's the most physical thing I've ever done in my life. And for them, doing this day in and day out, I just think it's amazing. I just feel such a, a sense of satisfaction that we've worked so hard through blood, through sweat, through tears, and, and the wall's up and looking brilliant. It's the smoothest, highest, longest wall I've ever had the pleasure to build. <laughs> Great wall of Indonesia. The Brits may have finally finished the wall, but there's still work to be done. In a neighboring farm, the prawns are ready for harvest. Harvesting is done at night when the prawns rise to the surface to feed. I'm feeling really tired and uh, really worn out, so I'm not too excited, I'm not too, uh, you know, uh, too happy doing this. When the tides are right, the farmers release the water from the ponds into the river through a sluice gate. So we open the gate so the water come out. And then after we fill it uh, full enough, we pull it and then collect and bring them up. As the prawns flow through the gate, they're caught in the nets. The, the shell will be broken. You should put your hand on the ash, yeah. otherwise the prawn will come out and you lose that prawn. It's taken the Indonesians weeks of hard work to get to this stage, so every prawn is precious. These are so big. I've never seen prawns this big. <laughs> I didn't think that people would actually be separating prawns themselves. I thought it'd be done by a machine. We have to be quick because uh, the prawns cannot uh, stand on the normal temperature, right? so we need to keep that cool. Careful. After four hours' work, all the prawns are packed and ready to be taken down river to the factories. Next, they'll be processed before being exported to the UK. But to actually see the prawns in all the glory and get to sort them out is just brilliant. Yeah, it makes you think that the last two days' work was definitely worth it. But after just a few hours' sleep, it's time to get up again. My God! I've never had to get up having three hours' sleep before and then go to work. I just call in sick if this happened to me at home. The group must now take the harvested prawns on a two-hour journey upstream to the factory's weighing station. Now they'll find out what last night's catch is worth. They literally treat a prawn as if you treat a wad of cash like back home. Yeah, like, God forbid you lose a prawn, like, every little It's like chucking money away. Yeah, it's yeah. literally like emptying your wallet if yeah. you drop a prawn. Let's see then how much we got. Tegu's factory pays around £1.20 for each kilo of prawns, but the tenant farmers only receive around 25p of this. The rest goes to the owners of the prawn ponds. Oh, OK, guys, well done. Ah, we got 80 kg. From last night. So now we can pay you. Okay. 80 kilos of prawns can sell for over £2,500 in the UK. The prawn farmers will get as little as £20 of this. Now the Brits can be paid for their contribution as farm labourers. Uh, finally, we got your wages. So this is 40,000 rupiah each. 40,000 each. 40,000 rupiah is 2 pounds. 2.5 pounds. 
As he had to hire extra workers, Tegu is paying them for just one day. I never thought I'd appreciate £2.50 so much. It's going to buy a very nice meal. Uh, I'd like to Thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the hard work we've done, I think we've got like two pound or something, which is really just stupid. But at the end of the day, if that's what they get paid over here, that's what we get paid. All they have to go through just to get it to this factory. To think that back home for the same kind of hours, as on minimum wage, you get at least 160 quid, let alone the kind of labour that we've done, you probably even get more. The Brits travel to the nearest big town, Samarinda. Tomorrow they'll be back working for Tegu in the factory that processes the prawns which are sent to the UK. But today, with cash in their pockets, there's only one thing on their minds, a takeaway meal. So I got some fries and some nuggets and an extra burger to keep me going. A whole day's wages and like one meal. I really don't understand how Prone workers or prone farmers can afford to live. Because if a day's wages will only buy you McDonald's and yet they put so much work into everyday life, it's sickening really. <laughs> After spending days in the jungle prawn farms, the Brits can finally spend a night in a hotel. Ooh, how lovely. Oh, smells good. Shower. That needs a wash. Hello? Josh phones yeah. home. Uh, are you all right? Yeah, are you? The other day I was sat in the pond on my own because the other guys weren't working as hard as I was and I was just sat there and I got a bit upset because I was just thinking to myself how much you do for me and I just wanted to say that I really appreciate everything you do, hon. And it, and it, not having you here just makes me realise how much you mean to me. All right, hon. Yeah, love you. Love you, missing you. Give me a kiss, give me a kiss. I love you. Love you too, bye. <sighs> I just found out that um, Finley's got his first tooth and I've missed it. And um, I'm just really cutted. Missing home so much. <sighs> oh God. After a good night's rest, it's time for the Brits to tackle the final stage of prawn production. They've already worked in the remote jungle ponds where the prawns are reared. OK, guys, good morning. Now it's time to tackle the factory where the prawns are peeled and packed, ready for shipping to Britain. Lauren. Minus. So now you are officially employed by our factory. I'm ready to scruff it out. Looking forward to this. This is only the calm before the storm. With a product like prawns, hygiene is taken extremely seriously. Siam Surya processes 15 tonnes of prawns a day. Massive, isn't it? The factory works in line with EU export regulations. Their prawns are supplied to many UK outlets. The hands here, just like quick as lightning. I don't even really know what, how they know where to go. It's like they're on autopilot. Workers stand up all day and must peel over 1,000 prawns an hour. That's 8,000 in a shift, or one prawn every three seconds. But it's not just about speed. Workers must not damage the prawns in any way. We pay less for inferior quality prawns in the West. You can't see anything other than their eyes. They're just like robots. Supervisors constantly monitor the lines to ensure the high targets and exacting standards are met. Um, this is our training section. 
The Brits will be starting off on the training line. The first thing Tagu wants to do is to see how good they are at peeling. This is what we need because this is our customer requirement. Otherwise, we cannot sell these browns. Is that clear? And I'll give you some time to practice. An Indonesian worker can peel over 80 prawns in five minutes. Oh. Tagu wants the Brits to peel just 20, but every one of them must be perfect. Gloves are pissing me off. Three now. One minute. They will only be allowed to join the real lines if they can meet these targets. I need to be faster. I'd rather not have pressure, but if you're going to win something, you need to have a little bit of pressure. Because I'm placed in a tight predicament, I'm not doing so well. Perfect. 30 seconds. There's no way, has that been five minutes? Uh, really good. 10, 9, 8, what? 7, They're the eight, fastest seconds I've ever five, heard. 4, 3, 2, 1. Woo! <laughs> Everybody stop. Done rubbish. How do you go? I got 13, but they're perfect. I'm shaking, look. My nose. It's broken, I can't go on this. Nine. Two. Broken. Oh. 19, almost. No good. Ooh. Well done. 11. Ooh. Oh, that's crap. Oh. 10. 23. Well done. Well done. That is ridiculous. Yeah, you know, keep price this week. Only James and Josh have met the factory standard of 20 perfectly peeled prawns. Tagu wants the whole group to practice more. Then please stop me doing this. I'm getting pissed. I just hate it. The more you do it, the more hacked off you get. 20-year-old Manos Kumar is a politics student from Collindale, North London. I'm an anarchist, equality over poverty. I'm an anarchist, abolish hypocrisy. I'm an anarchist, I hate the monarchy. <laughs> Manos's father emigrated from Bangladesh in 1966 and set up an Indian restaurant. Ginger and garlic. My relationship with my dad is below par. What he's done, he's done. Fair enough, he's looked after me, he's nurtured me. For this reason, I respect him. However, now it's my turn and my ambition is to do better than my dad. That's a catch-up as well, yeah? He's less uh, connected with the uh, Indian culture. He's more the uh, Western <laughs> type. In Western society, what's good about it is you've got the freedom to do whatever you please. My family would describe me as a spoiled bastard. Asian origin children, you know, I mean, they are educated in this country. They want money rather than like us, you know, we are satisfied with little money. I'm very arrogant. What I believe, I believe. He's a good boy, but, uh, but uh, he had to change. One hour later, and Manos is still struggling. The first time we started, I was really excited with this, but now I just feel like chucking it like no, that. Can't be just, isn't it? Like, you have to I'm not. Huh? Okay. Nothing's wrong. No, nothing's wrong. I cannot have any worker like you. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. It's up to you, boss. I'm not going to argue back. The group carry on practicing, but Tagu has had enough of Manus's attitude. You should realize. The thousand people outside this factory is willing for this job. Really? Really? Yes. So I can easily replace you with other people outside there. So Manos, because you are going a lot, I need to move you separately to other table. Yeah, no. So I have a yellow tape here. So every supervisor can watch out for you. Pakai kan? This is the, the normal treatment I give to any Indonesian worker who had done the same as Manos did to me just now. They're just not giving me any spirit and motivation to do the best. So you move to that table. Well, shall we do this? Yes, right. Cool. 
just not showing us the good spirit to learn and to achieve the target. So if he don't change his attitude, I just not need him anymore at this factory, right? What he has done today is that he has lowered my dignity by putting me in this isolated place. Everyone around is seeing me and you know they're saying, oh, this guy's got a yellow ribbon because yellow rib this yellow ribbon is supposed to represent a person who is failing and is about to get sucked. Are you ready, Manas? Tagu gives you Manos one last chance to prove himself. He wants him to peel 100 prawns properly okay, in an hour. Your hand shaking. I'm down. Just thinking about the prawns, not thinking about the time. After 20 minutes, Manos calls Tagu over to his station. Me standing here, I'm very isolated. Yeah. I'm alone. Yeah. It's like I'm in some, you know, it's like I've been punished for no justifiable reason. I don't care what you are saying, what are you going to feel. Fair enough. I care about what you are reserved, right? Fair enough. Right? Okay? Yeah. We are talking about 100 prawns, good yeah. prawns at this moment. That's it. Now, I'll be back in five minutes. Put your mask on. I can't breathe with it. Put your mask on. It's just not accept any any instruction, any learning from other. You just want to do his way. 40 minutes later, Tagu returns to see how Manos has done. Unpeel. Broken. Unpeel, right? Right? You get 100. That's good. That's it. I appreciate that. So I will bring you back to the turning line. You won't get any second chance. So please do your best. OK. Can I have a breath of fresh air outside. He may have completed Tegu's task, but it's all too much for Manos. Oh, I've never been hit hard like this in my life. Oh, that was so demoralizing, so embarrassing. What I'm thinking now, a part of me saying, look, you'll have, Manos, you'll have moments like this in your life where, you know, shit happens. There's another part of me saying that, don't take it anymore, just go up to Tegu and say, look, sack me. I don't really care. In fact, you know, I wouldn't work in that shithole. Everyone's humans at the end of the day, no matter if you're Indonesian, Indian, English, American, uh, Argentinian, etc., uh, etc. Et We're all humans, for fuck's sake. For Tegu to put yellow ribbon and then you know go up to that person and be in that person's face and keep you know saying hurry up hurry up hurry up that's not acceptable that's not acceptable back inside the factory Tagu has decided to put the fastest three Brits James Josh and Lauren on the real peeling lines yeah I'm a little nervous but hopefully um, my competition factor will uh, kick in and, and I can watch them and learn a lot from them Joe, you are there. Take position. He's putting us on the line of which is daunting because these guys are peeling ten times the amount of prawns we are. Workers here are expected to peel over 1,000 prawns an hour. That's one every three seconds. Super, super fast, all of them. The lady in front of me is absolutely speeding ahead. She um, isn't even looking up. She's just like, yeah, prawns, 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 prawns. The fastest peelers earn 35 pence an hour, a basic living wage in Indonesia. Uh, you must go quickly, you must quickly. I need to go faster. It's well hard to keep up the pace. And she's keeping like a tight ship. She watches her workers very well. I'm not really breaking many of the big ones. The small ones I break quite a lot. Because um, some of them were really, really oh. tough. Okay, apart from that one. After an hour, Lauren is called to the weighing station. Ah, oh, okay, Lauren, you have too many broken over here. 234. Broken? Broken. Uh, this is too many for us, uh, the broken one. It's about 25 to 26%. Normally, we do less than 2%. So I can afford to keep you on the real line. Lauren's peeling is way below factory standards. She's asked to leave the production line.
It was absolutely insane. There was no possible way in God's earth I could have kept up at all. I finished everything that was in front of me. But unfortunately, Josh is still peeling his prawns. I think because he's been slacking, the other poor people on his uh, table can't, can't go home yet. Well, it's the weekend, so they've got to be done before we go, because otherwise they'll be sat around for two days. So we need to pull our socks up. Last one. I oh, broke it. Thank God. It's the end of their time in the prawn factory. The Brits are staying with two of the factory supervisors. Manos, Josh and James head across town to line supervisor Afidin's home, which he shares with his family of 12. My name is uh, Afidin. This is my home. Welcome to my home. And this is my family. Hello. This is my father, this is my mother, this is my mother, and he is my grandpa. Hello. They okay, come on in the kitchen. I'm cooking in here. We wash the hand and the face, OK? OK. OK, guys, this is your room, OK? This is your room, OK? Come in. Oh, oh very nice. Oh, yeah. Hotel. Yeah, yeah, Hotel very... bed. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened today with you and Tagu? I just got, had enough of it, you know, because Tagu was literally on my face. Yeah, but he did that to us as well. Yeah, but no, I don't appreciate anybody telling me that I'm wrong. And that's that's why I was, you know, arguing back to Tegu, saying that, you know, think of me as a human, not a machine. I know we're from the completely different backgrounds, but I find it so hard to understand why you wouldn't take advice from someone who does that job and knows everything about it. It's confusing, I know. I really struggle yeah. getting my head around you. Yeah. I really do, because sometimes you're the mm. nicest bloke in the world. Other times mm. you act like a complete and a clown that's yeah. got no idea. Yeah. And sometimes I just want to smack you and tell you to shut up. A lot, but, a lot of people does. I, I'd say just from what I've seen today, probably the best thing to do in those kind of situations when you, you do have mm. a boss is just bite your lip. Yeah. The reason why I got really frustrated, which I should not have, I know I'm regretting it now, really, is because I've never had a boss that gave me a bollocking as Tegu did today. And it was my first experience. The girls are staying with another supervisor, Rinda, who lives in a dormitory on site at the factory. You get paid quite a good wage then, because you've got quite a good yeah. job in the factory. The some I save and then uh, some I give my parents in home. Oh, that's oh. nice. Oh. And then uh, give the, my brother. <coughs> that's really oh. sweet. In the UK, um, our families aren't, they don't seem as close knit and tight knit as you seem here. Rinda sends money home to her parents and she visits them once a week. Um, and it does sort of put a smile on your face. Like, family is important and I think. It's, you, you're reminded of it a lot more here. The second mother. <laughs> Afidin also supports his family, giving half his wages to them. Are you very close to your family? Yes, I'm very close with them. I love my family, together with them. We live differently from uh, your family environment. Uh, um, I spend a lot of time with my friends more than my family, but uh, I'm hoping after this trip, seeing how you live, that I would get closer to my family. The parents nurture you. They look after you. They brought you up in this world. And if you don't, you know, if you don't show them that respect, then the whole world turns against you. And I think for this trip, um, it certainly turned against someone. To see a family giving half their wages to the mother to keep a roof over your head is amazing, and I don't think it's something you'd see back home. It certainly makes you miss home a lot more as well. It makes you appreciate just what we've got. Hello. Hello, Ma. For the first time in two weeks, uh, I mean, uh, Manos phones his parents. In, uh, Indonesia. Huh? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting on OK. I just, um, yeah, I, kn 
I know a lot of people are worried, but um, I've, I'm okay. I'm okay, coping well. And my mum was really upset when I called, but um, she, you know she was saying, "Why didn't you call for a long time?" And I said to her, "You know, I, I gave her the explanation." But at the end of the day, she's happy about it, and she said that you know, if you need anything, just give me a holler. It feels much better. You know that tense feeling that was inside has disappeared. Just to speak to my mum, it's uh, done the world. Of, you know, it's done really good. When I go back to London, I hope to make up for you know. Hope to make up for the time that I lost with them. Next week, the Brits head to the remote northeast of Thailand, the world's largest exporter of rice. In the UK, we eat almost half a million tonnes of rice a year. To start thinking what's in this water, I'll probably run out screaming. The Brits must survive on workers' basic wages. He didn't do it. He won't pay you. Everything we've earned is going towards rent. We still don't have any food. And fend for themselves for the very first time. I've never been presented with a chicken with its face on.